OpenAI just flipped the switch on something people have been waiting for. Full MCP tool support in ChatGPT's developer mode. And this isn't just another upgrade. It's the moment ChatGPT stops being a Q&A assistant and starts acting like a real control center. At the same time, ByteDance is taking aim at Google's Nano Banana with a faster, cheaper model. DeepAgent is letting creators spin up apps with payments wired in minutes. Adobe just dropped enterprise-grade AI agents into its cloud stack. And Claude? It can now edit Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and PDFs without you even opening them. The pace of AI updates is insane. Let's dive in. Open AI, because this is the one that changes how you actually use ChatGPT. Developer mode now ships with full MCP tool support. In practice, that means you're no longer limited to pulling information from systems. You can push changes into them. Imagine updating a JIRA ticket, firing off a Zapier workflow, tweaking a CRM entry, or chaining services together into real workflows without ever leaving chat. It's rolling out in beta for Plus and Pro users on the web, and setup is surprisingly simple. Head into Settings, Connectors, Advanced, flip on Developer Mode. From there, plug in your own MCP servers inside the Connectors tab, and they appear directly in the ChatGPT Composer. The mechanics? ChatGPT talks to those servers using protocols like SSE and streaming HTTP, with OAuth if authentication is required. You can toggle tools on or off per connector, refresh them whenever your server updates, and keep everything in sync. The real breakthrough, though, is write access. ChatGPT can use any tool your connector exposes, not just fetch or search, but actual modifications. That makes prompting critical. If multiple connectors overlap, you'll want to tell ChatGPT which one is the source of truth. If two tools look alike, be explicit about which to use. You can even define sequences step by step. First read the repo file, then write the modified version back and ignore everything else. To help with this, the descriptions you give your MCP tools really matter. Clear, action-oriented notes like use this to update customer records make ChatGPT smarter at picking the right one. Because this is right access, OpenAI added strong guardrails. Every tool call shows the full JSON input and output before it runs. And right actions always need your explicit approval, unless you decide to let it remember. The safety bar is high because prompt injections, slip-ups, or malicious connectors could break things fast. But handled carefully, ChatGPT stops being a static dashboard and becomes an active workflow engine that takes real action in real time. Now ByteDance. Their latest model, SeaDream 4.0, just dropped, and the target is obvious. Google's Gemini 2.5 flash image, nicknamed Nano Banana. ByteDance claims SeaDream 4.0 now beats it on internal benchmarks across prompt adherence, alignment, and aesthetics. No formal technical paper yet, so treat that as a claim, not gospel. But product-wise, the direction is clear. SeaDream 4.0 merges the text-to-image power of SeaDream 3.0 with the editing chops of SeedDit 3.0. That combination is what early testers are calling the real evolution. Pricing is aggressive, too. Domestically, it holds at $30 per 1,000 generations. Globally, on fast platforms like Fall.ai, it's around 43 cents per image, while Gemini 2.5 Flash sits closer to 3 9 tenths. Performance? ByteDance says raw image inference is over 10 times faster than previous versions. Early feedback praises editing accuracy, faithful changes from text prompts without breaking composition. Availability runs through Jamang and Dupal on the consumer side, Volcano Engine for Enterprise. On public leaderboards, Gemini 2.5 Flash still tops both generation and editing. SeaDream 4.0 hasn't been ranked yet. For context, SeaDream 3.0 sits 5th for generation and 6th for editing. Meanwhile, the broader Chinese scene is heating up. Kuaishou and Tencent are both pushing. The government now recognizes copyright for AI-generated content and enforces mandatory labeling. Internationally, VidU rolled out a multi-reference workflow tool that blends up to 7 images at about 9 cents each. Gemini allows 9 references. So depending on how reference-heavy your workflow is, you've got options. Deep Agent next. This one hits creators, freelancers, and small teams where it matters, getting paid. The new update lets you generate a fully working app from a single prompt with Stripe payments wired in as a first-class feature. Not just code stubs, live payments. If you've ever integrated Stripe manually, you know the pain. Keys, scopes, environment variables, webhooks, sandboxes, endless documentation. 
Here, the agent simply asks for the essentials, product names, pricing, what's included, and then scaffolds the entire app with checkout already wired. Link your Stripe account through a secure setup, and from that moment, sales deposit straight into your account. No duct tape in between. The builds it generates don't look like prototypes either. You get a clean site with three funnels ready out of the box, a product page with Stripe checkout, a workshop booking page with payments, and a consultation page that locks payment before anyone hits your calendar. Updates are frictionless too. Want to change pricing, add a product, or run a discount? Say it, and both the Stripe logic and the UI adjust together. And it doesn't stop at storefronts. You can prompt for a mini CRM, a Notion-style workspace with permissions, a marketplace, even a microblog. Payments remain embedded throughout. The team at Abacus.ai is fueling an ecosystem around this with weekly build contests that pay $2,500. The base tier starts around $10 a month. Compare that to months of engineering, full dev teams, and six-figure budgets. It's no wonder someone reportedly launched a paid app live in half an hour. That's not just a flex. It's a signal the bottleneck shifted from can I build this to do? I have something worth selling? Adobe just moved from talk to execution. Its AI agents are now generally available across the experience cloud. This isn't hype. It's infrastructure turned loose. The backbone is the Adobe Experience Platform Agent Orchestrator. It uses decision science plus language models to parse intent and trigger the right agents toward a business goal. The lineup spans audience building, journey orchestration, experiment analysis, site optimization, data insights, and customer support. These agents live directly inside Journey Optimizer, Customer Journey Analytics, Experience Manager, and the real-time CDP, which means they're plugged straight into the data you already turn over inside Adobe Stack. Adoption is real. Adobe says over 70% of AE customers already use the AI assistant that fronts these agents. Big names include Hershey, Lenovo, Merkel, and Wegmans. Customization is expanding too with Agent Composer, Agent SDK, and an Agent Registry coming soon giving teams ways to tune behavior under brand rules and compliance policies. On the partner side, Adobe lined up Cognizant, Google Cloud, PwC, Omnicom, VML, Medallia, and Pavich to push multi-agent collaboration in industries where compliance and handoffs are heavy. Under the hood, the system runs dynamic adaptive reasoning, so intent mapping isn't static. It adapts as customer journeys evolve. The pitch is clear. Augment teams, increase ROI, personalize at scale without ripping out existing workflows. If you're already in Adobe's orbit, these agents aren't a bolt-on. They live inside the workflows you already run. And then Claude. Anthropic just made one of the most practical moves in AI this year. Claude can now create and edit Office files directly from natural language, Word docs, Excel spreadsheets, PowerPoint decks, even PDFs. You hand it some data or a plain request, and it generates the file. It can handle uploads up to 30 melabytes, meaning you're not constrained by size. It can convert CSV or TSV into structured reports, generate charts, and most importantly, perform bulk, context-aware edits without you ever opening the file. Tell it to replace every ABC with XYSD, convert USD to Euros at today's rate, or switch every manager title to executive. It applies the changes instantly, preserving formatting, layout, and design. One pass, no manual cleanup. Google's Gemini can export docs too, but mostly for creation. The difference here is speed and control over edits on existing files across multiple formats. And there's a bigger signal. Microsoft is reportedly closing a deal to bring Claude directly into Office 365. If that happens, Anthropic's flow slots natively inside Word, Excel, and PowerPoint, turning Claude from an assistant in another tab into a true operator inside your daily tools. For anyone wrangling reports, decks, or financials, that means offloading the grind. Contextual find and replace, currency adjustments, role normalization, table fixes, without breaking templates. The bigger picture is obvious. That's it for today's updates. Let me know what you think in the comments. Hit like, subscribe for more, and I'll catch you in the next one.